one of the ways in which uh, knowledge is differentiated in the knowledge management and um, ontology of knowledge literature is in terms of we call it scale or connectedness, but there are a number of different terms which seem to indicate a scale or a series of connectedness. Uh, and they range from data to information to knowledge and then to wisdom. I can't call to mind the reference right now. I'll um, make a note of it later where this stuff comes from. And, uh, and those, those four categories represent different complexities, as I say, different levels of connectedness, different scales of operation, and different dimensions of operation that uh, the different kinds of knowledge um, works at. It's a little bit confusing because knowledge is one of the terms within it, but I have to use the terminology I'm given. In that understanding, data is um, well, it's sort of unitary and distant, certainly in the terms of the general metaphor that I'm working with, which is the spatialization of knowledge. A, a data, an item of data, would be unconnected to the body at its most distant, at its most bounded. It would be the equivalent of a fact, a date in history, that kind of thing. That would be an element of data, a reading on a thermometer or some other sort of scientific instrument. Second up from that is information, and in that sense, information is um, what can be inferred from different from sets of data. So, for example, lots and lots of data giving thermometer readings over the course of the year would produce knowledge about the changing seasons, for example, or changing weather conditions. Uh, different elements of data to do with uh, dates of history would give knowledge, for example, of the succession of kings of England or the waves of invaders which have swept the shores of this country or whatever, that kind of thing. So knowledge would be built up from sets of data. Uh, I beg your pardon, information would be built up from sets of data. Next up from that is knowledge. And interestingly enough, in the, in the um, references that I'm thinking of here, knowledge is conceived of very specifically as spatial. Uh, but knowledge uh, tells you, how do they phrase it? They tell you um, where knowledge, where information becomes applicable. That's how they, how they phrase it. They talk about it in geographical terms or spatial terms. That, that once you've gathered in all this information to do with weather conditions or something like that, then that gives you access to knowledge, which tells you where something is appropriate. So in that particular example, to do with weather conditions and temperature, uh, it might tell you where to go for your holiday, or tell you where the... Um, where the best place to put a fruit tree in your garden might be. And that knowledge is only accessible once you've gathered in all the information, and the information is only accessible once you've got the data. Uh, beyond uh, knowledge in this schema, and it's worth noting at this point that what's happening, I think, what's perceptible to me at least, from that shift from data and through information to knowledge is there's an increasing proximity of, um, of the ideas that seems to be moving close to the body, but also seems to be moving to more dispositional. Knowledge, in that sense, is something that a person uses. It's not distant from the person in the way that the data, an item of data is. It is uh, it's something that a person would need to act upon, perform, for Okay, so you've got data, information, knowledge, and in this particular set, the last one, which they refer to is wisdom. And, uh, wisdom, and I'm going to have to reread this, because I'm not sure if I've entirely grasped this, what they're trying to say here. 
what they talk about with wisdom is that it's um, in the way that knowledge is knowing where to apply information, wisdom is knowing when to apply knowledge. Knowing when to apply knowledge. So, um, knowing when to act and when not to act. Almost completely dispositional. I, I suspect it would correspond in some ways to what um, David Perkins refers to as proactive knowledge. You can choose to act or you can choose not to be proactive. And uh, and wisdom, of course, is, is not usually characterized as something out there in the world at all. It's not data, nor is it information that one can read in books, nor is it knowledge in the sense that one can, uh, can see its application readily and perhaps even transfer it and learn from it in a relatively easy way. Wisdom is considered to be entirely dispositional. It's something that a person has, maybe even something that a person is, in a sense. Um, and when you get wisdom, you, um, you get it inside you. You don't get it at a distance. One of the things that's um, exercising my mind in relation to that continuum is to do with the relationship between wisdom and intuition, which I've spoken about elsewhere. And what I'm talking about there is the, uh, the sense of intuition, or wisdom in this case, as being a kind of, uh, as being a function of, uh, of the complex organization of data sets or of knowledge or of information, however you want to phrase that, the complex organization uh, which exceeds our ability to be rational and conscious about that organization. And here I'm referring to uh, that work carried out by Dika House on decision making, in which the, the participants in the experiment were invited to make decisions based on different numbers of variables. When the numbers of variables was, were quite small, i.e. when the data was quite small, when the amount of information that they had at their fingertips was manageable, then they were very good at making rational decisions, conscious rational decisions. When the data sets, or well, the number of variables got very high, i.e. the amount of information they had to try to use as knowledge and be wise about, uh, when it got exceeded their ability, a certain, a certain number, their ability to hold those variables consciously, then their rational decision-making process were terrible. But their non-rational, intuitive decision-making processes functioned very well. So they could take on board 20 or 30 different variables after they had a good night's sleep or after they went through some sort of intuitive guessing process. They could make good decisions. They just couldn't make them rationally. So in a sense, what's happening there, I think, is the is an experience of the getting of wisdom or the development of intuition. Uh, but it's a function of the complexity of the relationships and the scale of that complexity, scale of that relationship, with massive amounts of data sets. A little bit like learning, I suppose. You learn to drive a car, every corner is different, every traffic light is different. But after a while it becomes completely, well it ceases to become just data, this traffic light, that traffic light. It starts to become general knowledge about traffic lights. Beyond that it becomes, uh, you just develop an intuitive sense, a wisdom. And you can pull up at the lights, go around the corners without even thinking about it, relying entirely on the supreme intelligence of your own embodied understanding.